What is happening, friend? And welcome to another Photography Talk episode. And it's one of those episodes where I'm thrilled as hell. I'm not in my studio. I'm actually, I was out uh, at my favorite little field shooting a video for uh, my four-wheel drive talk uh, company on diesel heaters. And while I was out here, I decided, you know what? I'm not ready to jump back in my studio. It's, it's actually gorgeous. I mean, look at the... Flowers are beginning to bloom out here. It's nice and yellow. There are a handful of bees around here, which I'm allergic to bees, so I gotta watch myself there. But it is fantastic out here. And I decided there's a video that I've been promising that I would do here for a good six to eight months. Um, and that is, as the title suggests, what's in my camera bag. Now, I have to give some fine print and kind of backpedal a little bit here. The last uh, uh, What's in My Camera Bag video I did was in 2020. And I believe then I mentioned that this was the first What's in My Camera Bag video I've done. Um, truth be told, guys, I'm not a What's in My Camera Bag sort of guy. I don't pay attention to these videos and I really don't get the purpose. I'm, I get the purpose of them to some degree. But then the other part of me is really wants to say what I'm going to share with you now. You see, what's in my camera bag fits my shooting habits, shoots my needs, and your needs are going to be different. And so at the end of the day, I'm going to, I'll share with you what's in my camera bag. But, you know, look, don't go running out there buying whatever I have in here because hey, you saw me talking about some gear. Think about first, what are your needs? What are you looking to get out of your photography or videography? If your uh, needs kind of line up to what mine are, yeah, you know, put some thought into it, sleep on it, uh, but or even go out there, rent it, or find a friend that might have the same gear, get out there, play around with it, and see if it fits your needs before you go making an investment into it. Now that said, another little fine print that I'm going to say here is, I hope this wind's not gonna butcher my audio here, <laughs> but my bag, my what's in my camera bag, really changes from time to time, uh, depending upon what I'm going to be shooting when I'm heading out. Um, these days I do a lot of video. Actually, it seems I'm doing a lot more video than I am uh, shooting uh, stills. So what's in my camera bag is really laying down. You may recall, I think in the 2020 uh, video that I did there, um, I had mentioned in there that I was kind of consolidating my bag. And right prior to that, I had moved from shooting Nikon for my stills. I had a Sony camera for my B-roll and my primary video camera was that Panasonic GH5. And you may recall, uh, that's when I, right around that, that time frame is when I moved to Canon. I picked up the EOS R and then I want to say I had the M6 or something like that for, for my B-roll as I was waiting for the uh, R5 to come in. Uh, so at any rate, well, that that bag evolution is continuing. Um, my What I head out with is very, there's a lot of thought. Yeah, I don't want to make it over sound over technical, uh, but there I do put some thought into what's in my camera bag for when I'm heading out. Uh, if I'm traveling, uh, what's in my camera bag definitely has a facelift uh, versus if I'm driving around and going on one of my off-road adventures and so forth and I have my truck with me. So obviously I'll bring a little bit more gear with me. Most times I will bring two bags with me. So I have, this is my primary. What I'm gonna share with you in this bag right here is my primary. My primary camera is my R5. Now I do shoot in my studio, I shoot with an R6. But when I'm heading out, I'm trying to even think the last time I had my, my R6 with me. Most of the time, it's my R5 is the one that's coming out with me. And so, anyway, without further ado, guys, I'm going to dive into what's in my camera bag. And, of course, before we get going with all this here, look, hey, I'm putting this video together because, well, we didn't put, I didn't put one, I didn't do a what's in my camera bag 2021. And, well, you guys let me know that. You were so kind to let me know, Alex, why do you do a 2021 what's in your camera bag? When are you going to do one? And so we're going to hammer that out right now. If you find some value with this video, do me a favor. Crush that like button down below. It really does help with the whole YouTube algorithm. That said, my friend, pull up a seat in. Let's go. Oh. 
All right, so I think a good spot to start with what's in my camera bag is what camera bag am I using in 2022? And what's funny about, obviously, with what you're looking at here, uh, when Manfrotto sent this case to me to review, which you guys have probably seen the video on that, that, was, that came out last year. In that video, I said, I am not a hard case person. I never really cared for them because they're usually big, bulky, and I didn't feel, it, it wasn't for me. Since that review, it's the case, I, I haven't taken my gear out of it. I absolutely love this case. So this is the Manfrotto Tough 55. This is part of the Pro Light series that they have. This hard case is a rock star. Uh, and it's perfect for the amount of gear that I bring out in my kind of call it everyday kit. Now, a moment ago I mentioned what I bring with me kind of changes from day to day. There's a few items in here that are pretty much always in here. The R5, which I'm talking to right now, uh, there is, might as well talk a little bit more about what's on top of that. Uh, we have the Peter McKinnon. These are the uh, Polar Pro variable NDs. I have two of them. I have the two to five and the six to nine. Right now we have the two to five on the camera right now. Um, I will usually carry both my uh, Video Mic Pro, which is on the camera right now. And then of course the Video Mic Go to this is a rock star of a mic. So, I'm if you've watched any of my videos or watched some of them in the past, you know, uh, while I've tested quite a handful of mics, I absolutely I always fall back to the road mics. I absolutely love these. So, those are the two mics that I pretty much almost exclusively use all the time. Now, there will be times where I'll be mic'd up with a lav mic, but again, it's the uh, the Rode Wireless Go 2, which are the the, the wireless uh, lav mics that they have, and sometimes I'll, I'll even plug in like the Countryman uh, B6 uh, lav mic. So those are the exceptions that you don't see in here. Now, in terms of glass, uh, lately I've been testing out the 14 to 35. Now, what's on the camera right now is the 15 to 35 2.8. I've heard quite a handful of uh, great reviews on the 1435. This is the F4. As you can see, it's quite a bit smaller than the, uh, the 2.8 Big Brother. And it's a great lens. It's a great sharp lens for what it is. Uh, next, so I have the 50 millimeter. Uh, this thing is an absolute rock star. Absolutely love this lens. This is a 1.2. It's a it's a chunky little pig there, but the image quality and video quality out of this here is boy nothing short of extraordinary. Sliding over, we have. The old faithful. I think every camera bag needs to have a 70 to 200. This is such a great lens. Um, I absolutely love what Canon did with this here. While it doesn't get used, the lens that gets used most of the time, because I when I go out, when I'm shooting video, the 1535 is almost exclusively always on the R5. When I'm shooting landscapes, <laughs> the 1535 is almost exclusively shooting on, or is always on the R5. Now these others are, they become more of a, having the right tools for the job when you need it. The 7200 is a great tool for shooting landscapes, but it's also great for getting in those nice, close, tight shots that you want. So while it doesn't get used a lot, it's a great tool to have. <laughs> Go figure. Wet wipes. <laughs> uh, okay, we have the uh, stack of memory cards here. I usually will always head out with four batteries. There's three in here. There's one in the camera. And then for a lot of the product shots that I use, I have the 100 millimeter 2.8 from Canon. Uh, again, a great lens. Doesn't get used a lot. But it's one of the tools that I always have with me because there are times where I wish I had it and it's always a pleasure to find it sitting in my bag because it gives the depth of feel with this, the sharpness that this lens creates. Matter of fact, there's a review coming around the corner on this very lens, so stay tuned on that. Now, one of the things that I absolutely love, which is what we started out this video, shooting the video on, I will always have three GoPros with me. And you may be saying, Alex, why do you need so many GoPros? Well, 
I use them for different angles. Uh, each of these are kind of set up for kind of grabbing quick and to be able to run and gun with so I don't have to swap them out. Uh, this one right here, this is a GoPro, this is a 10. This has the media mod kit on it, so this is going to be for a lot of those intros where I do that's what's going on or what's, you know, the, the intros. Um, yeah, GoPro 10. Then I have, this is a, a 9, so these are going to be getting those kind of uh, first person views. So that one's always set up with that. And then last but not least is a straight alone kind of, this is more of a spare. Um, so in case if I'm shooting for a while, GoPros do have a tendency to, to heat up. So I do have a spare that I can swap out uh, and without having to wait for a particular camera to cool down. So that's the purpose of that one. Um, and then speaking of heating up, so the R5 has a smidge a little problem there with uh, with overheating and it also has a 30 minute uh, time limit on it for what you can record so I have the Ninja Atomus uh, and this thing is a absolute rock star so I'm able when I know I'm gonna be recording either some longer video or if it's freaking hot as hell out I'll record on this because then I don't have to worry about it's actually recording on this device so I don't have to worry about the camera uh, overheating on me or running out of time if it's going to be a longer video that I'm shooting then let's see here okay this thing which I owe you guys a review on this here this is the PGY tech um, this is the mantis and this little tripod little gadget here this thing is stinking awesome now a few weeks ago I was talking to a buddy we were heading up to Big Bear and he has he was asking me my opinion on a older uh, Canon camera DSLR that he has that he's had for the last seven eight years kind of asking you know he'd like to start using it and I shared with him I mean honestly you know you haven't used it might as well just sell the thing because what he has a Samsung um, the, I forget the, the new phone there, but it's a smart Samsung smartphone and it has great cameras on it. Sell your DSLR, you know, spend that money on something that you're going to use more frequently because the thing about it is the new phones, the new smartphones these days, unless you're a professional photographer, you don't need a mirrorless, you don't need a DSLR. This little bugger right here is going to do exactly what you need it to do and it's convenient. You always have it with you. And so, anyways. Going back to what's in my camera bag, guys, that's it. You know, the in the studio, I have the R6, but we're talking about what's in my camera bag. So in the studio, I'm not really using my camera bag. So I'm not going to count my R6 that's in the studio right now. So it's the R5, the 1535, the 1535 uh, F4, the 50mm 1, 2, 70 to 200, the 100mm, some variable NDs, three GoPros, my uh, iPhone, a couple road mics, and spare batteries, memory cards, and the Animus Ninja 5. And friends, that's it. As I promised you in the beginning of this video, this bag has really consolidated over the years. Now, I will add that if I'm heading out and I know I'm going to be able to want to get, or I want to get some uh, aerial shots, I will bring in my uh, DJI drone, which is a uh, Air 2S is what I'm using right now. And that's that's it and so as I shared with you nothing really extravagant just a kind of a lean down kind of lean and mean package that when I go heading out and when I travel boy this actually gets quite a bit now if I'm traveling and I'm not doing any work which are kind of rare moments uh, but those particular cases I'll just bring the R5 or this or maybe a couple GoPros in one lens or maybe two lenses with it and that's it well there you go guys this was I promise you this is a long overdue uh, video so if you enjoy these sort of videos I hope you got some value but let me stress again before you go out there buying anything spend some time really evaluate what are you looking to get out of your photography what are you looking to get out of your videography if you can rent it if you can borrow the equipment test it out first and see whether or not it fits your needs fantastic uh, then go out there and purchase but anyways I hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, do me a big favor. It's that time of the video where, yeah, I'm going to ask you to... could you say that again? Sorry. No! <laughs> do all that YouTube stuff. So hit that like button down below if you're currently not subscribed to the channel. Friend, what are you waiting for? We'd love to have you part of the family. And last but not least, smash, crush that bell. So therefore, you're notified every single time that we come out with a video just like this one. Well, 
That said, my friends, I'm going to pack up what I have here. As I mentioned, I was out here shooting a video for my four-wheel drive, four drive talk company a little bit earlier. Now I'm going to go put my trailer back in storage, get back into my studio. Actually, I'm a little hungry right now. I haven't eaten lunch yet, but it's a beautiful day. But regardless, I'm going to scoot off there so you get out there, stay healthy, and take your best shot.